Bobby J. Jones. He's the pitcher. He got runners on. Just lay it down, son. He lays it down. Tyler Houston jumps out. He's got a strong arm. Arm gets a 10. Accuracy is about a 4. Gets away. Todd Pratt will score. And the Mets tie it up at 1-1. One, one. Next batter, Benny Agbayani. This is why John Snyder has had trouble. And one in three months. That gets through. Kurt Abbott would score. Now we're going to throw it to the plate. It's going to be up the line a little bit. Benny, he's running. Houston's throw gets away. Another error. Agbayani waved to third and was not giving maximum effort in the outfield. So Agbayani's going to come all the way around to score. Three runs score in the play. The Mets get four and earned in the inning. Bottom fifth, Jay Payton batting with two on. He delivers the base knock. Fonzie scores. Mets lead 6-2. And now comes the really important one. Todd Pratt subbing for Mike Piazza. And we have three straight hits by the Mets. Todd Zeal scores for the first time in 93 innings. The Mets have had more than two hits in an inning. Go celebrate with the champagne. Mets go on to win at 10-2. Little players only meeting. Gets the termites out of the bat racks. Four runs in the second. More than the Mets. The second, Andrew Jones at the plate. Swinging, uh-oh, hits Ramon Castro in the head. Take another look just in case you enjoy seeing someone in severe pain. Jones' bat hits Castro in the head. He would be fine. A trainer would come out and look at him. Castro would stay in the game. Bottom five, Kevin Millwood at the plate. Braves down 3 0. Millwood the bun. Ramon Castro must have a headache because he overthrows first. Reggie Sanders will score. Then Mark Kotze's throw to third. Uh, all sorts of problems. Walt Weiss would score. Braves now within one, 3 to 2. Bottom nine, Braves now down 5 3. Andrew Jones at the plate, two on. Jones finds some space. Mark DeRosa would score. Jones was two for five with an RBI. He's hitting 306. Braves within one. Same inning, Chipper Jones. Braves need that big hit from Chipper. Didn't get it. Chipper was 0 for 5. He's hitting 297. Alex Gonzalez, the throw, and Mike Redman with the tag on Rafael Fercal, still 5 4. After an infield single, bases full for Andres Galarraga, not to be. The big cat left four on base. He was two for five, and he did not come through on that moment. Marlins win five to four. The loss by the Braves shrinks their lead over the Mets to just two games in the East. Kevin Millwood loses for the first time in 11 career September decisions. I'm just kidding. We're pals. That's right. Vladimir Guerrero pops one up. Guerrero went hitless in this game. That is rare. Look at this catch by Travis Lee into the stands. And this is even better. The gun as he guns out Andy Tracy at third. More impressive than the catch. Game scoreless through seven, top eight. Jose Vidro playing hurt with nagging injuries all year. This was his only hit of the game, and it was his 23rd home run of the year. He's hitting 330. Expos win, one nothing. That was the only run of the game. Tony Armas Jr. gets his first win since July 30 through. Deal, Jose Canseco facing Joey Hamilton in the second, and Jose Canseco dings one through the left side. He was three for three, three runs, three RBIs. Tino Martinez, one of the RBIs, 2-1 Yanks. Three batters later, Chuck Knobloch facing Hamilton. Men on second and third. Nobby, that's going to go rattle in a corner because the outfielder can't get it. Jorge Posada, Canseco are going to score in Knobloch for the second time. He's going to have to run 270 feet, two triples on the season for Nobby. It's 4-1 favor the Yanks. Denny Nagel using his changeup as only Denny Nagel can against Carlos Delgado. He missed. Jose Cruz Jr. Air bat. Cruz Jr. again and he falls for it again. Off-speed pitches are just evil. Nagel's dad likes it. Seven and two-thirds. Eight hits. Two runs. Seven Ks. Bottom four. Canseco facing Hamilton and that is really far. Canseco's 15th of the year. Sixth as a Yankee, 6-1 New York, and they would win it by a count of 10-2. Nagel improves to 11-0 with a 2.41 ERA over the last three Septembers for Chuck Finley and some trouble in the third. Nomar Garcia Parra batting 133 this season against the Tribe. It comes through with a base hit here. Jose Offerman scores. Carl Everett scores. It's 4-1 Red Sox. Next batter, Dante Bichette. Fly ball, be free. His third homer since joining the Red Sox, and it is now a 6-1 Boston lead. Bottom three, still 6-1. Robbie Alomar facing Ramon Martinez. Alomar, that'd be a home run if we were in a silo. As it is, it's just deep. And then Carl Everett and Bernard Gilkey don't really talk it out that well, so the ball drops. Sandy Alomar scores, and Kenny Lofton, who's usually quick about these things, isn't going to get down. He's going to get out. Hosed at the plate, 6-2 Red Sox. Indians just get one out of that. Bottom six, six, three socks. Martinez facing Manny Ramirez. Oh my, that is major wood. Ramirez two for four. Now 98 ribs and 358 at bats this season. Six five Red Sox on Ramirez's 28th. Paul Shuey against Jose Offerman. 
shoots that the other way. Rico Bronio will score 7-5 Sox. They go on to win it by a count of 8-6. Boston inches a game close in the wild card race. Two back. Finley fails to produce in a six-run third and 30 starts this season. Finley. Licky facing Maglio Odonez with a man on Odonez. So money and he doesn't even know it. His 30th home run of the year. He also added his 31st home run not seen in this picture. 118 RBIs as well for him. 3-2 Tigers. Bobby Higgins and up. Bases full one out. Higgs not happening. Pops it up to Ray Durham at second. That would be out number two. And Bobby Higginson would let us know how he feels about out number two. He's also not a big fan of the Bobby Knight interview as well. Next inning, 6-2 Tigers. Higgs up again, two men on, and Higginson. Says he was responding to the verbal abuse by White Sox fans in the outfield. They took it out on the Sean Lowe fastball, number 26 on the year. Higgs feels better about the equipment now. Tigers roll 10 to 3. Frank Thomas, not a factor. I mentioned that he was 0 for 4. He's now hitting 334. A top one. There he is, his one and only at bat against Dan Serafini. Against Dan Serafini, Big Mac rounds out to the shortstop Pat Mears. Mac would exit before stepping in left field. Daryl Kyle to Adrian Brown. Kyle, cat like. Top of the fifth now, Fernando Tatis taking us for a ride. His 16th home run of the year. The cards would go up 5-0 in this one. As for Daryl Kyle, he was cruising. Just ask A.B. Adrian Brown. Kyle gets his 18th win, goes six, no earn runs allowed, five Ks, no contest. Kyle wins his four straight starts. St. Louis has won nine of its last 12. Mike Matheny drove in three. The cards lower their magic number for clinching the NL Central to eight. Ken Griffey Jr. expected to miss as much as a week after partially tearing his left hamstring Monday night. During a game against the Cubs, an injury he's been bothered with all season. But Peter Gammons told us on Baseball Tonight, Griffey has been playing through it all season. That's right. That tells you something about Kenneth Griffey. Reds hosting Kerry Wood and the Cubs. There is Jr. resting the hammy. Gary Matthews up, man on second. The bunt. Osvaldo Fernandez rushing the throw. Gets away from Sean Casey. Eric Young would score on the error. The Cubs go up 1-0. Meanwhile, all eyes on Sammy Sosa, right? Because he's one home run away for 50 for a third straight year. Against Fernandez is Sosa. Didn't happen in this game. Sammy 0 for 4, he's hitting 322. What about Kerry Wood? Was nasty in a good way. Eight Ks, four hits. Kerry Wood hurls a second career complete game and gives Don Baylor his 500th managerial win. You might recall uh, Wood's uh, first complete game. He struck out 20 Astros in a game over two years ago. Sweeney. Simply showing off his woodwork. His 26th home run of the year. He would add his 27th later in this game. The man is hitting 341. He was three for three with two RBIs in this game. Second inning, one nothing Royals, two on, nobody out for Joe Oliver. The blooper. Oliver, three for five, three RBIs. He's hitting 273. Johnny Damon can't make the catch. Mike Cameron and Carlos Guillen would score. Oliver slides into second with a double, and he is exhausted. But great effort, Joe. Mariners go up two to one. 4-2 now, Royals down, threatening, bases full, Jermaine Dye the chopper. Garcia throws home, the 1-2-3 double play, Dye 0 for 4, he's hitting 318. We have two outs, next batter, Joe Randa. Randa, slapper, Carlos Guillen. Has it all the way, firing to first for the out. Randa thought it was a foul ball, no matter. Mariners find a way, 11-3. to three. The M's 7 and 5 this month after going 11 and 17 in August. Mike Sweeney, though, now with 133 RBIs for the Royals, tying the club record set by Hal McCray back in 82. Looking to keep pace, Jason Giambi facing Brad Radke. Giambi, Jimmy Jackson for his 35th home run of the year. 2 1, Oakland. Bottom four, we are tied at two, though. Eric Chavez facing Brad Radke. Chavez says, I believe it's time for me to fly. Number 22 for him. It is now 3-2, to two, Oakland. Yeah, it came back, but it's a home run. Top of the six, two out. Mark Mulder against Corey Koski. Mulder. Seven innings, three hits allowed, two runs, five Ks. Bottom seven, one on for Jason Giambi. His work not complete against Ratke. His fifth multi-home run game of the year for Jason Giambi, number 36 on the year. He was three for three with three RBIs, and the A's keep pace. They win five to three. Oakland wins to pull to within a half game of Cleveland in the wild card race. They stay. He comes into your picture soon. The blooper. Here comes a Lou. Is he going full speed? I don't think so. Miller hustles to second. He was watching Moises Alou. The throw rolls back into the infield. It's a double for Miller. He would homer later. Bottom three, Giants up 5-4.
Jeff Bagwell has someplace else to go. Number 43 for Bags, tying the team record he set back in 1997. We're tied at five. Astros have a man on first two outs, Sean Estes, going for his 10th win in 11 decisions, picks off Lance Berkman. Astros run themselves out of the inning. Tie score in the fifth, Barry Bonds. Number 46, that ties a career high that he set back in 1993. Bonds three for four with three runs scored, he's hitting 319. Giants up by one, Astros have a man on first, and Estes does it again, this time picking off Julio Logo. Lugo. Marvin Bernard also homered in this game, 9-5, the final Bonds. Hey, MVP is hitting 609 with seven homers, 14 runs scored, and 15 RBI in his last eight games. Sean Estes, he loves his teammates. The Giants have scored a total of 210 runs in his 27 starts this season. Do the math. That's the highest run support in the majors. Dodgers D-backs at Bob. Luke Prokopek making his major league, first major league start. Kelly Stinnett gets robbed by Adrian Beltre. Sweet pick there. You're out at first. He's a catcher. They're not that fast. Top seventh. D-backs up 4-1, but the lead is leaving on that ball. Dave Hansen, pinch hit, three-run shot. Hansen's seventh pitch hit homer of the year, breaking the major league record. Set in 1932 by Johnny Frederick of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Tied at four. That's not good. Steve Finley takes one right on the hand. Take him out of the game. X-rays did not reveal any breaks. He will be reevaluated on Wednesday. Later in the A, still tied. Matt Hurgis to David DeLucci. He had a wrist problem last year, but bounced back. Little chopper, no play there. The run scores, and the D-backs win it by a count of 5-4. Matt Manti saves his 14th and 16th tries. Young Young Kim, the winner. Schilling doesn't win, but ends a four-game losing streak. It's his first no decision in 15 starts dating hits there's 196 he would finish the game two for three so that makes 197 hits and he's batting 381 top four two one rocks Juan Pierre chopper Damon Jackson nice but there's two parts after you catch it you got to throw it well there's an error two runs will score the Rockies led four to one and would win it by a count of six three Masato Yoshi five innings pitch three hits one earned run he won for just the second time in 13 starts helping himself along the way bottom of the seventh Adam Kennedy it's Brian Ricar throw it Throw it. Throw it. Hit it. Got it. Little bingo. That's going to get in the gap. Garen Anderson's going to score. Benji Molina will score. And Kennedy, he's going to get himself three bags out of this thing. Ten triples on the year for Kennedy. The Angels take the lead. 3-2. Top nine. Angels up 5-2 with Steve Cox at the plate. Troy Gloss. He has a glove, but gloves are for sissies. Just barehanded. We look at it again because we can't. Gloss. There it is. He's right-handed. Catch, throw, nice defensive play. Angels win it by a count of five to two. You gotta like that. You gotta like Belcher. He comes through with his second win since coming off the DL. Angels now 73 and 72. Kennedy, two for four and three ribs in the ball game. Orioles Rangers first to two. The Orioles have come out publicly and said they want Cal Ripken back next year. Ripken, though, flies out here against Rick Kelly. Rip was 0 for 4 on the day. Bottom one, Orioles up 1-0. Gabe Kapler against John Parrish with a bags full Kapler. That is far. Eugene Kingsale knows you have to wreck your body to save your name. Sack fly, though. Luis Alisea would score on it. We're tied at one. Bottom two, Alisea facing Parrish. Runners at the corners. Alisea. It's shallow. Eugene Kingsale, another squeak grab. Scott Sheldon would score. Rangers roll. Unbelievable. 9-1 the final. Rick Helling pitched three-hit ball for eight innings. He wins for the first time in six starts. Scarborough.